just so you know, it's really early in the morning and for the first time in a long time, I feel pretty good. Hi guys, my name is Monica and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. Now before I get this video started, if you're new here, welcome. <laughs> I don't know how you got here, but welcome. But if you're not new here, you know that I have been through the ringer the last month and a half or so. It's been quite a daunting journey to get to where I was at the end of July to where I am now. It's, <laughs> it's been really rough, but I'm happy to say that I think the storm clouds have cleared and that right now I'm in a good place. That doesn't mean that tomorrow I'll be in a good place, but that at this very moment when I'm filming this video, I feel pretty good. So what, is it, what does that have to do with this video? Well, during the time that I wasn't feeling well, I had a lot of time on my hands to just kind of touch base with myself, to allow myself some grace when it came to reading. It was a time where I really reflected on my reading and particularly my reading habits. And when I was trying to come up with a video to film for today, I kept thinking, sorry, I'm looking because my cats are again trying to give me a heart attack because they're, they're like going outside and I hate it when they're outside without me. When I was trying to come up with this video, I realized that going through the ringer and going through the shit during the last couple of months has taught me a lot about reading that I don't think I would have learned otherwise, especially the way things were going. So these are the five habits that I learned while going through depression and also being a booktuber. And I hope that these habits can help you in your real life, not because you're a booktuber, but because you like reading. And maybe sometimes you have some really bad reading habits. And don't worry, I'm not gonna talk about anything like, don't read this, don't read that but just ways of making your reading experience the best it can be. So let's jump right into it. The number one tip that I learned during this time is don't force yourself to read. I know booktube skews your perception of what it means to read a lot or what it means to read a little. I mean, for like the average reading for I think people in the world is about 10 books per year. That's what most booktubers read in a single month. And we're talking about not even a good month. So sometimes I feel booktube with the best of intentions makes us feel like we're not reading enough. So we force it. We're like, no, 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 I have to finish five books this week or five books this month or whatever. Stop, put the book down, don't force it. If it's starting to feel like a chore, then it's time to let it go. Maybe not forever, maybe you just need a couple of days to mourn, maybe you need a couple of days to relax, maybe you need to watch the boys. Whatever it is, don't force it because reading is an enjoyable experience. And if you start to force it, then it starts to feel like something you don't wanna do. And that is something that I was doing a lot because of course I've got this beautiful platform. And if I was not filling it up with reading content, then what, what is I supposed to do? And what ended up happening was that the more I forced myself to read, the less I wanted to read. So, just don't force it give yourself time. When I started doing that, when I just gave myself time off and stopped reading, was when I actually realized that I felt like reading. And that takes me to my reading habit number two. DNFing is caring. For anybody that is new to booktube or doesn't know the booktube jargon, DNFing means did not finish. 
sometimes we go into a book with really high expectations sometimes we really want something from the book and the book is just like nah man so what do we do we force ourselves to finish it of course because why i mean unless you're doing this for school and you have to read the book and either way you can still get stuff from the internet you know you don't have to force yourself to read it why are you forcing yourself to finish books you don't like i mean there's a trend on booktube where you read really bad books or books that you don't like and people just push through and finish them and i feel that that is setting up this horrible expectation for people that you have to finish every book that you pick up when that is so far from the truth i don't finish watching tv shows i don't like i don't buy clothes that i don't think fit me right when i you know try them on i don't finish books that i am not enjoying period so please 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 don't force yourself to read things you don't like for the sake of saying that you finished it the other day i was reading what was it I, emma emma by jane austen it was my first jane austen i was gonna do this whole series on jane austen i was gonna read all her books i was gonna watch the movies do a book to movie adaptation project on it i had everything set up in my head and i really didn't like emma to the point where i dnf'd it and nothing happened the world did not come to a stop my reading did not come to a stop I don't think I am less of a reader for not finishing Emma. I just didn't like it. So I didn't finish it. And if you're reading something that you're not enjoying, for the love of whatever di deity, 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 I don't know, <laughs> you believe in, put it down. Donate it. Recycle it. Do whatever you want to do to it. But don't freaking force yourself to read it. That's just gonna put you in a reading slump and nobody likes reading slumps. Okay, my tip number three is a little bit strange and I know you're gonna think that to do this you have to be into audiobooks, but just listen to me for a second. Move while you read. Now, of course, if you are into audiobooks, this is very easy. Yesterday, I had about three hours left of an, aud of an audiobook that I was listening to and I was listening to it at 2.5 speed. So I was like, I can go out for a walk and finish this. So that's precisely what I did. I went out on a walk that turned into a run and I finished the book and I feel that, oh my God, I'm so sorry about the construction. <laughs> I feel that reading is such a stationary experience. We sit down, we read, and sometimes that can be very good, especially if you have like a really active job and stuff. But you know, with everything happening in the world and us just moving from our living rooms to our bedrooms and from our bedrooms to our bathrooms and then you know, we continue this endless cycle, we don't move. So I think reading and moving go together remember bell reading the book while walking not that i recommend that you read a book while walking but for those people that don't like audiobooks or that can't find themselves getting into them jesse from the bookish mom actually reads while she works out on her kindle like she'll set the kindle like she has a whole setup with her uh her bike and not outside like a stationary bike and she reads there Reading while moving not only motivates you to read more because you get those endorphins going, you feel really good, your body is in a different position and you know, things like that. So it's really good for you. And if you do like audiobooks, then go out, take a walk, take a walk and just listen to that audiobook and get lost in it. It's such a gratifying experience. If none of these things, if you don't want to go out for a walk, if you don't want to like, you know, set up a Kindle, stop while you're reading every now and then and just uh, stretch it out, stretch it out. Just move your body a little bit. You know, again, a lot of people change positions when they're reading and stuff like that. But I feel that if you're anything like most of us, 
you were just like stuck in one position reading for a long time and that tends to get you tired and kind of sleepy and then <laughs> it just turns into a vicious cycle so move around if you're reading a play move like if you were the characters in 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 on stage that is such a like an immersive experience for reading plays so just move around move your body stretch it out you know stop every now and then and just kind of you know do one of those <laughs> it really does help and it will make you feel so much better between the construction and my cats this video is a disaster tip number four is something that I learned when I was back when I wasn't reading and I watched a movie called I Am Mother and I remember watching that movie and I was like this is it this is how I want to feel when I read my books I want to feel this sense like of emotion I want to feel this so what the hell am I doing reading books that are not making me feel this this is again a bit of a Mary Kondo thing where it's like this shit's not sparking joy so why the hell am I keeping it you know so Find books that really move you. Again, if it's not moving you, DNF it. If you read it and if you read the synopsis and you were not into it, but the rest of booktube is, well, the rest of booktube can tell you about it, baby. You don't have to read it, you know? You have to find whatever moves you. And even if you are the only person on the planet reading this book, which I have been that person, you know, my favorite book of all time, I'm like the only one that's read it, who the fuck cares? This is not a popularity contest. Find books that move you. Find books that speak to your soul. Find books that make you feel like life is awesome because you read the story. Right now, if things are not like feeling great for me, they're not sparking joy, they're not... I, I try to remember. Remember when you what you felt at the end of re uh, reading Dune, of reading Born, of reading Solaris, of reading The Memory Police, of reading Do You Dream of Terror 2. If the books are not making me feel at least a little bit like that, then what's the freaking point? I'm not studying literature. So for me, there's really nothing to gain except saying that I read this book so that I can talk to you guys about it. You know, and I know that you guys love it when I rant on books like that, and I like it too. But try not to make it all about that. So find what moves you and go forth and read. And my last is to slow down. You don't have to finish 10 books a month. You don't have to meet your Goodreads challenge. You don't have to read faster than anyone else. You don't have to have 20 books to wrap up at the end of the month. You just have to read one book as long as it moves you, as long as you felt good reading it, as long as it was something that brought some joy to your life. The rest is just bells and whistles, so slow down. Read slowly. I was talking to one of my friends called Sarah from Voyages Through Time and um, we were discussing how poetry doesn't lead itself for book to reading because in the case of Sarah and I, we read poetry slowly. I like to read a poem, sit down and think about it and just not read anything else for maybe two to three days. That means that I would finish one poetry book per month or something like that. So what? Maybe my viewership will go down. Oh no, the end of the world. One of the things this period of sadness reminded me of is what makes me happy. And I wasn't, not that I wasn't doing things that made me happy for this channel. But I was starting to fall down this booktube hole of Oh, I have to read the new releases Oh, I didn't finish this book, everybody's talking about this book Oh, you know... Whatever Slow down Read slowly Enjoy every word I read The Picture of Dorian Gray and I loved it 
I would have loved it even more if I read it more slowly. Sometimes I listen to audiobooks at 3x speed just so that I can get through them so that I can say that I read them so that I can have something to wrap up at the end of the month. Sometimes I read them at 3x speed because I'm so into the story that I'm like, you know, into it. But to be honest, sometimes I just need to slow down. So I'm doing that. Which is funny because now that I'm doing that and I'm listening to audiobooks at 2x speed, I'm reading more than I have in a long, long time. And maybe I'll stop reading this week. I don't know. We'll see. But in the end, the important thing is that I enjoy the process. So that's it. Those are my five habits. Well, that's 10, but this is five <laughs> that I think you should pick up to better your reading experience. Do you have any habits that you feel like enhance your reading experience please leave them down below i love your comments thank you so much for to everyone that commented on monday's video saying that i looked excited to read again that i really looked excited i feel excited and i love everything that i have planned and i love everything that i'm reading right now so let's hope this lasts let's hope that we're over that hump and without further ado I guess what's left is to bid you adieu with a friendly reminder that I post every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and that I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye.